So first thing you want to know is how to uh, find a sample space given some sort of experiment. So that that's the sort of thing here where they say, okay, two coins are two coins are flipped. So that's the experiment. You're flipping a coin. Find the sample space. So find the sample space basically just basically means to list all the possible outcomes, right? So usually we use this notation S for sample space and we put it in like little curly brackets. And so then we just list all the different possible outcomes. Well, you could have gotten two heads, right? You could have gotten a head and a head. You could have gotten a head and a tail. What else could have happened? You could have gotten a tail first, right? A tail and then a head. And then you could have also gotten a tail and a tail, right? So these are all the different possible outcomes when you flip two coins. So that's, that's how to find a sample space, okay. Um, property, probability rules and interpreting probabilities, all right? So probability rules are things like this, where we need to basically determine whether or not these values are probability. So you need to know, um, basically, there's basically one rule for probabilities, is that probabilities must be between 0 and 1, right? And they do include 0 and 1. All right, but any, any number outside of 0 and 1 is not a probability value. Okay, um, in terms of interpreting probabilities, values closer to zero are near impossible, and then if it equals zero, then it is impossible, right? Values closing to one are very possible, and if it equals one, then it's guaranteed, right? So that's what it means to for interpreting interpreting probabilities. You need to know that. All right, so which are um, valid probabilities? Uh, 0 0.01, is it between 0 and 1? Yes, so that one's good. Negative 1 is not between 0 and 1 because it's negative, so it's not good. Okay, and you need, to, you need to be able to explain why, right? And this one, the reason why is because it's negative. So just like how in the um, uh, sample problems where it says to explain, on the exam you'll also have to explain why or why not, okay? Uh, is one a valid probability? Yes, because you're allowed, probability can equal one, right? As a matter of fact, one means guaranteed to happen. Four fifths, okay, four fifths is between zero and one, so that's good. Negative four fifths, that's not between zero and one because it's negative. So that's not good because it's negative. This one's not good because it's negative. Five halves, Oh wait, sorry, I skipped zero. Zero is good, right? Because we have greater than, less than or equal to zero, or greater than or equal to zero. Um, and then five halves, five halves is not good. Why? Because five halves is more than one, right? Remember two halves would be one, so anything more than two halves, so like five halves, that's more than one. So that's, that's more than one. Okay, and then point uh, six three, that's good again. All right, so that's basic rules for probability and interpreting probabilities. So let's go ahead and check that off. All right, so then basic rules for computing probabilities. We have three rules. The subjective probability, that's not really gonna be covered on the exam because that's just, um, you know, it's not really a computing probability method. That's just sort of a, um, you know, a way that people sometimes approach probabilities, like Weatherman, I guess is the classic example, okay? So at relative frequency approximation and classic approach, you should be able to do both of these. So let me do a few examples, okay? So a recent poll consisted of a random sample of uh, 3,125 Americans. Of those guys, um, 1,001 184 said that they have at least one dog. Estimate the probability that a randomly selected American has at least one dog. Okay, so this is basically, this is a relative frequency approach to probability. So if I define event A to having at least one dog, then what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find the probability of A. So we're, what we're gonna do is, in the relative frequency approach, we're gonna count the number of people that, num the number in A 
divided by the total, right? So how many people have at least one dog? What's the number that I have this? 1184. The total number in the sample is 3125, okay? And so you can simplify this and round it off to four decimals, or you could just leave it like this, and that's okay. All right. <clears throat> Next, using the uh, classical approach to probability, this is when we have uh, events or the outcomes are all equal, the e have equal probability, such as the two coins that were flipped, okay? So remember our sample space, we had head, 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 tail, tail, head, and tail, tail. Okay, each of these outcomes have the same probability of occurring. So we can use a classical approach to probability to finding the probability of any of these events. So what's the probability that we get two heads? So the probability of head, head, this will just be the number of times that happens in your sample space. It looks like that happens just once divided by the total number of outcomes in your sample space, which are four. So the probability of getting a head head is one fourth. All right. All right, so that's basic rules for computing probabilities. So now finding uh, complements, right? Using prob or using complements to find probabilities. All right, so let me go go ahead and go down. We have an example for this. So the probability that an alarm clock will work on a given day is 0.99. Find the probability that it will not work. So if A is the event that the alarm clock works, okay. And we, what we want to know is the probability that it won't work. A lot of times, the opposite of an event is usually noted with a bar, okay? So not work. So the probability that it will not work using complements would be 1 minus the probability that it does work. The probability it won't work is 1 minus the probability that it does work. So that is 1 minus 0.99, right? Because an alarm clock either works or it doesn't, right? So, um... You know, the total probability is 1, so 0.99, and then the probability it doesn't, if you add those together, you should get 1. So 1 minus probability that it doesn't work, or that it does work, should be the probability that it doesn't. So that is 0 0.01. All right, then also we should use complements to find probabilities for the at least one type problem. So here's an at least one type problem. So the probability that zero people will enter a bakery before 6 a.m. is um, 0.58. Find the probability that at least one person enters the bakery before 6 a.m. So we, what we want to know is the probability that at least one person enters the bakery. Right? So either zero people could enter enter the bakery, one person could enter, two people could enter, three people could enter, etc. Right? The infinite number of people technically, I guess, could enter the bakery, right? So what we want to know is what's the probability of one, at least one is one or more, right? What's the probability of one or more entering the bakery, right? So at least one, using the complement, so the opposite of at least one would be none, okay? So the complement of at least one is always none. This is the opposite, right? So one minus one minus none is the probability of at least one. So the probability that none enter the bakery is 0.58. So that is 0.42. The probability that at least one person enters the bakery is 0.42. Okay. So that is using complements. So next, let's use disjoint, or let's determine um, events are disjoint or mutually exclusive. Those are the same thing. And let's go ahead and, at the same time, let's do the addition rule. 
I went ahead and I saved contingency tables for the next video because uh, contingency tables were also used in module 7. So I saved that for the next video where I'll talk about module 7. So let's go ahead and right now finish this one by talking about disjoint or mutually exclusive events and the addition rule. Okay. So, oops. In puppy training class, there are five black dogs and three brown dogs. Assume the dogs only have one color, okay? So of the five black dogs, two of them are small. And of the three brown dogs, one dog is small, okay? So uh, one dog is randomly selected from the class. We want to determine, um, def we want to define these events, okay? So event A is the dog is black. Event B, the dog is brown. Event C is that it's small. Okay, so our A and B disjoint. So is being black and brown disjoint? In this case, yes. Okay, and you would want need to explain. Well, why? Why is it? Or why are these guys disjoint? Well, they're disjoint because dogs can only have one color, right? So you can't be both black and brown. So the explanation you would write something along the lines of, well, you know, dogs can only be one color. All right, our events A and C disjoint. So black and small. No, because there are black small dogs, right? No, because there are, because black and small, that, that, that is an option. Um, well, let me, because dogs can be black and small, right? All right, so, um, these guys are not disjoint. They do not occur. They can They may occur at the same time. All right. Uh, so now let's find the probability of event A or B. So this is the addition rule. So the probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. Okay. So what's the probability of A? Well, the probability a dog is black. Well, let's see. How many black dogs are there? There's five out of what? How many total dogs? There's eight dogs, right? There's five black, three browns. So that makes eight to dogs total. All right. Probability of B being brown is three out of eight. Okay. And the probability of A and B of being black and brown, well, since they're disjoint, that's zero, right? Since A and B are disjoint, that's zero. Okay, so this is one, which makes a lot of sense. Five eighths plus three eighths is one, which makes a lot of sense because the probability that the dog is either black or brown in this um, example, it's a hundred percent that that's going to happen because it looks like this training class only has black and brown dogs. There's no other color, all right? So that's why total probability, I mean, the probability of this happening is one. All right, so let's do an example that's slightly more difficult. So what about, what's the probability of A or C? So this would be black or small, right? Black or small. So using the addition rule again, this would be the probability of A plus the probability of C minus the probability of A and C, okay? So A, it's still five out of eight. Now probability of C, this is a little more tricky because they didn't, oops, they didn't directly tell us how many um, small dogs there are. So we kind of have to read this question carefully. So of the, the five black dogs, two of them are small. So there's two of those guys that are small. And of the brown dogs, one is small. So how many total small dogs do I have? There's three out of the eight that are small, right? There's still eight dogs, right? There's five black, three browns, there's eight dogs. It looks like three of them are small dogs. Okay, so the probability of being a small dog is three out of eight. Now minus probability of A and C. So A, remember, is black, C is small. So how many dogs are black and small? So of the five black, two are small. So it looks like two are black and small, right? So minus two out of eight. 
All right, so this is five plus three is eight, minus two is seven. So the probability of being either black or small is seven eighths. All right, 